The next question to ask is what can we do with this vorticity transport equation for a constant density flow in 2D with conservative body forces uh, along with the continuity equation? Um, well, this leads, the fact that we're in 2D, um, this uh, set of equations leads to a formulation called, called the vorticity stream function stream function approach it's a famous approach early on in the development of computational fluid dynamics the best part of it is there there's no pressure remember the pressure is, has always been elusive finding the pressure so we eliminated the pressure by taking the curl of momentum but we still have this um, um, velocity vector field over here that's coupled to omega it kind of makes it really complicated but the fact that we're in 2d implies that we can use the stream function stream function now remember that u was defined as the curl of psi and from that definition you can get the relation between u and the stream function um, for example for Cartesian coordinates Cartesian uh, we had u is equal um, d c by dy and v was equal minus d c by dx you can change the negative sign depending on how you interpret this um, it doesn't matter um, and the best part of this is that this automatically satisfies um, the continuity equation so there's no worry about the continuity equation um, but still how can we use this um, to develop a, a methodology to solve um, to solve the vorticity transport equation because we still have one additional and also now we have we went from omega uv to omega and c so we still need one more equation um, for psi and that is going to come so if you count with me this is one equation d omega by dt plus if you want to think of this um, if you want to if you want to expand this this is u d omega by dx right u d omega by dx plus v d omega by dy let's say we're doing cartesian is equal new del squared omega now we can substitute c here um, in place of u and v and we get dw by dt um, minus d c by dy dw by d omega by dx plus d c by dx d omega by dy is equal new del squared omega so we have one equation two unknowns so how do we get an equation for c we still need an equation for c well if you remember that there is a relation between omega and c that we we showed previously when we um, set out to do the stokes equation and if you look at omega is equal to curl u and that's equal to del squared c in orthogonal coordinates in orthogonal orthogonal coordinates okay and that essentially um, closes and 2d and 2d so this essentially closes our system of equations simply that omega the only non-zero so no more vector over here um, no more vector okay omega is equal to del squared c so equation one equation two now numerically an algorithm to do this would be step one initialize initialize with um, velocity if you want from which you can compute omega okay initialize with omega then solve to solve del squared psi equal this omega then three solve equation one equation one okay if you want this is two solve equation one for omega and four repeat 
of course you need appropriate boundary conditions for um, omega and c and i as i mentioned earlier when we were doing the stokes equations um, this is not an easy task to do but numerically you can do some approximations some first order approximations to obtain omega from an initial um, velocity field so typically you initialize with a velocity from which you reduce boundary conditions on omega and c and then um, um, and then from there on you can do this process. This is a pretty powerful procedure, um, uh, was, has been quite successful, um, and however it's limited to two dimensions. Extensions to 3D are extremely complicated, um, and typically we just prefer to use the primitive form of the uh, Navier-Stokes equations.